Hey guys, welcome back to the Good Hair Guide. It's your girl, Amma. Thank you for tuning in to another video. Thank you for sticking with me. I know I've literally been like MIA for the longest, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But I am back, I am back, I am back, I am back to continue with the Good Hair Guide. I am here to basically show you all things that lead to good black natural hair. So that includes my natural hair journey. I will be sharing various tips and tricks that I use to maintain and retain my hair length. I also trial different products that help to support us, 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 4C women. So yeah, I got you, I got you. And if there's any comments or questions that you have, you know what to do. Feel free to leave any comments you have in the description box below. Yeah, it's just countryside vibes right now. Flies and wasps and all sorts, but you know, we are slowly acclimatizing to the, the climate. Uh -huh. So make sure also, 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 if you haven't hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, at Good Hair Guide. Make sure you share it with a friend. Make sure you tell a friend. Make sure you watch my videos. Make sure you support me. This is a short part of a documentary which Sky News featured, um, and it's called How Do We Embrace Our Natural Hair, which essentially is a documentary talking about black hair by um, people within the black community. So I'm gonna be giving a review on this. So let's get going. This is my culture. If I can't embrace how my hair grows on my scalp, how can I embrace myself? How can I embrace where I've come from? I'm not averse to relaxing my hair. I know it's obviously like a political subject and people are like really against it. But a lot of my friends who work in like corporate companies, they can't wear their hair a certain way or they have to wear it, wear a weave or something because it's not seen as professional. Eurocentric beauty. So that is a comment I can definitely relate to being a black female who has spent majority of her life in the corporate world. There's just certain standards that you feel very quickly that you have to conform to to be able to be accepted. And it's not just from the perspective of um, your hair. You're being judged on the quality of your work. You're being judged on the quality of the output and how quickly basically show your worth and prove your worth just as a black person. So like I can completely understand in terms of like not wearing my natural hair purely because it was not something I really wanted to become a topic of discussion. It, and in terms of being able to educate the corporate world about black hair, it, it wasn't a discussion that was really in ever entertained. And when I say entertained, I mean from the perspective of um, them trying to understand exactly what my hair is and why my hair looks a certain way. It was much more easier for me to be able to just like throw on a wig. I don't really have to deal with comments about, okay, why does my hair look like that? Why is it so spongy? Why does it look so different? Why does it feel so different? You just become almost an experiment or you become this like unknown being or species and you already feel like you don't fit in for certain reasons. My hair is off limits critique me and judge me for my work, critique me and judge me for what I do for this team or for this organisation, but y'all, like my hair, my hair has always, always, always been off limits in terms of um, showing my natural hair in the corporate world. You just tend to get by, as in you tend to not be a target uh, for looking different uh, with your hair sort of out and like afro and all that sort of stuff. You just tend to, to fit in and be treated like everyone else. We just want to feel like everyone else in terms of like be treated the same, be treated equally, but because of things like our hair, yes, you very often find that we do wear weaves, we wear wigs, we wear straight hair. So we can, we can eat as well. That's basically it. My views on wearing natural hair in the corporate world have changed. And there are certain organisations which are much more open and aware of you expressing your blackness. Um, I don't, I don't think we're there yet. D definitely don't think we're there yet. But I definitely have a different mindset from when I first started in the corporate world to now in terms of how I view wearing my natural hair. Well, yeah, if you want to know more on that, please feel free to leave some comments in the description box below. Um, you can reach me on Instagram and yeah, we can we can definitely continue that conversation. Yeah. ...have historically deemed Afro hair as unattractive and unprofessional. But does society and the black community itself still have a hard time accepting natural hair? So I think in terms of the comment, like, do we have a problem with our Afro hair? I hope later on as part of this documentary that that 
question is, is answered. I think there are so many challenges and complexities when it comes to um, black hair. I believe we're unravelling as a black community in terms of how to deal with natural hair, how to manage it, how to treat it, what to do, how to style it, how to embrace it. And that comes from literally the spectrum of how slick, shiny and soft it is compared to how coarse, tough, thick, high density, all those sorts of complexities come into whether we have a problem with our Afro hair. Um, I don't think the word problem is how I would look at it. I think it's more about understanding more the difference of dealing with Afro hair and, and what that involves. I think I would, yeah, question the do we, do we as in, we as a black community, we as the whole entire world like me and me and my partner like yo so i'm hoping i'm hoping that question does get answered my name is serge hey, i'm a filmmaker from london but i was born in the congo when i was younger some of my friends at school had their hair braided in cornrows but i couldn't because as my dad made clear we don't do that in our culture how many of you have heard that we do not do this in our culture we do not grow dreadlocks. We do not, uh, guys do not go, how many times? But I swear, I remember like there were times, like I have, I have older brothers and stuff. Oh my gosh. I remember they tried to grow their hair like how many times? And I don't know if it was like my mum and like the blood fire of Jesus, but it just didn't grow like past a certain length. And I think like God answered her prayers, but literally it was like an abomination. That is something that you do not do. But on the flip side, there was also the view that cutting your hair like short as, as a boy was not something that was readily accepted. I've actually always wanted to have short hair, just just shaved, like a nice little fade or something like that, you know, you know. So yeah, it's just, it's just so interesting where that ideology stemmed from in terms of guys not being able to grow their hair. And in terms of an African, African society anyway, our parents... I'm Ghanaian, West African by heritage, and it was very much seen as something that is unpresentable. To who? Our parents' generation. But where that ideology came from, and why like my grandma and why my mom uh, maybe would say that it's unpresentable, is something that is very, I would use the word colonized. But let's see what Serge has to say about this. So it was strictly a level one or two trim with a skin fade. Hmm. But these decisions are far from trivial. To understand the significance of black hair, I began by exploring its roots in history. For centuries, black communities around the world have created hairstyles that are uniquely their own. But the slave trade changed everything. One of the methods that the slave masters used was to try to dehumanise the individuals that they were enslaving. One of those things was to categorise them. The lighter the skin, the easier the hair was to manage in Western terms. Um, it's been at the, the root of, of a lot of discrimination. After the abolition of slavery, when people wanted to get into getting work, even as a musician, they couldn't walk past without having to go through the pencil test. Pencil test? If in a big musical hall, at the entrance, they'll be told, if you want to pass, so in terms of what Dr. Sarah Schillingford said, I really like the fact that she pointed out that in terms of managing black hair for the Western world, it was the lighter your skin colour, um, the more easier and acceptable it was in terms of the texture of your hair. I just want to point out obviously that there are light skinned females who have thicker, coarser hair. So it's not necessarily generalising across like all light skinned females. But I, th I think obviously she's pointing out in terms of the majority and the Western world or identifying light skinned females uh, with um, more softer textured hair and it is obviously very clear in terms of the fact that she's pointing out that that was how the western world saw being able to manage black hair i don't think that is something that we are still experiencing as a black community today uh if your hair is more on the 4c side it's not it's definitely not i do not in any way shape or form believe or feel like my hair is um unmanageable but just from the western perspective that was how um, we were perceived so at the entrance they'll be told if you want to pass this pencil has to be put through your hair and if it falls to the ground you can come in if it gets stuck you can't come in so without saying if you're black you can't come in 
they would say, if you, it's an indirect way of saying, if you haven't got European straight hair, you're not coming in. Like, can you actually imagine that happening now where you are t to gain entry into somewhere? You know, some people like are struggling to get a passport and let alone, let alone now to enter, to enter, they are telling you, bro, you know, you need a pencil to be able to... We've come a long way, guys. There's still a, a lot of work to do, but we've definitely come a long way. And while some struggles of black hair are based in history, others go back to our first experiences of black hair in childhood. And why did you come into it? Uh, to get my son's hair done. So what's it like having to do a uh, black son's hair? It takes time. It's took me a while to learn, but just watching other people, really. You've got to sport that fro, haven't you? I think that is so sweet. <laughs> Bless her. She probably took a sigh and was just like, yeah, it takes time. <laughs> And literally, I think we are all learning and we're all on this journey together in terms of understanding more about black hair. So I just want to point out that this mixed race young boy was having his hair blow dried and you can see the texture of his hair was quite um, thick. Um, so it's not necessarily all light skinned uh, people that have uh, softer, wavier textured hair. But I just want to commend the mum for understanding and appreciating obviously how much time it takes. Afro hair is a way of life, like it is part of our identity, it's part of who we are. That, that, that it, it comes as a package. If anyone out there is struggling to maintain their child's hair, that is also something that I can support with in terms of showing you techniques and tricks and tips. Hit me up, DM me, drop me a comment, email me, I got you, I got you. I hated getting my hair done. It was, um, you see my baby pictures, everyone laughs at me and say, Lucrece, what the hell is going on with your hair? I just, you know, heard it, you know, the shaver come into my, my head and I just lost it. I just remember crying and crying. My first ever memory of my hair was just sitting in between my sister's legs and like holding tight while she came with my hair so tight. I don't remember my natural hair as a young child. Boy, I think I can relate to those struggles. My one, my hair was a lot. Follicles upon follicles upon follicles upon follicles of just hair everywhere. And it definitely wasn't easy. If I look back now, I feel our parents may have been educated in, in terms of being able to manage and understand how to maintain black hair. So it, it's painless and pain free. And that is something that these days, even when I'm educating my clients, even when I'm dealing with my hair myself, or just generally talking to people about, about black hair, I 100% like advocate for the fact that black hair is easy to manage. It doesn't have to be painful, it can be painless. Um, but what are some of your experiences as a child in terms of having your hair done? I quite remember, ha, huh, there was a number of times. I mean, I had voluntary haircuts, like voluntary haircuts. No, hairdressers didn't even know. Specialists specialist didn't know how to manage my hair. I, I can't remember one time I went to Ghana, my hair was, my natural hair was probably about here somewhere, um, big, big, I'm talking big afro, like just there dropping. And then I had a uh, single, single plaits done, like quite big ones, like that, you know, that Cleopatra sort of vibe with the coloured lassets at the bottom. Hmm. I was there, you know, I was there. And then um, my mum left, she went somewhere. She came back maybe about an hour later and she walked in and the hairdresser was literally giving me short sleeves. She was giving me short sleeves like here. My mum was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, you know, banging out the tree. I thought that somehow your hair just disappeared into it. So when she was cutting the braids, I didn't realise she was actually cutting my natural hair. I didn't say anything, you know. Uh, Cleopatra, all that sort of vibe. So I was just like, mm. And then um, my mum was like, Amma! I was like, mm, what's the problem? In my head, I was just thinking, what's the problem? And she's like, I don't know, what's the trouble to you? I'm just like, mm, no, I didn't know. My mum gave the woman fire. And then the specialist, she said something to my mum like, oh, your, daughter's, your daughter has too much hair. So she just thought she would cut some of it. <laughs> Can you imagine walking into a um, hairdresser telling you, or the mother of the client that, your daughter has too much hair. There has been so many perceptions of Afro maintenance and what that looks like and what that should feel like. But I, um, I have so many stories. I realised that was the starting point for me, not viewing my hair as good hair.
by the time I'm 17, I've got an afro in and I've got a... Yeah, so I really, really hate how that term has been uh, stigmatised within the black community. I always, always, always used to get told that I have good hair. No. So, um, and that was also one of the reasons why I named um, this channel The Good Hair Guide, because I genuinely believe that all black women, all of us, all of us, all blacks have good hair. It's just about understanding. It's all about understanding and education in terms of how to manage and maintain your hair and understanding what your hair needs. And that's what makes it good. Anyone, anyone that comes to me with hair problems or hair queries, that is the first thing that we focus on. Me understanding how you see your hair. Good hair, I just hope, like I hope that my channel resonates with someone, even just one person to understand that it's about understanding your hair. It's not that there are a certain category of women that just magically have good hair. Like we've all had our trials and tribulations. I mean, with me, uh, my biggest one is my edges and I need... I am actually going to be like documenting and showing you the various different um, techniques and approaches that I've tried to like manage and grow back my edges. But good hair is relative. All hair is good. It is not. It is not a specific category of, of blacks. Uh, a comb in, in the afro walking around just trying to like a self-representation, trying to find yourself. Minstrel shows in the 19th century mocked the hair texture of black people comparing it to wool and often describing it as nappy. To be accepted in society and to achieve a higher social status, some women began to straighten. And just a, a slight digression, that chocolate minstrel, how have they been able to get away with having that name on chocolate for like, for like the longest minstrel? Yo. Their hair. So what Galaxy. is it like to have Galaxy. your hair chemically relaxed? It's kind of like a form of self-degradation. -de you're burning your scalp to the point you've got scabs in your hair to make your hair straight, to fit in with this Western um, concept of beauty. I think I was like 19 or something, and like literally like most of my hair on like my left and right temple, it, it gone. I'd used like a relaxer that had literally like just burnt all the way through. You have to get like retouches, and then your scalp starts to burn and you get like little I sores. I really for my sisters who are going through the perming struggle. I've actually been fortunate enough to never have permed my hair. I've just always had to figure it out in terms of like understanding how to deal with my hair, whether that meant I had to fix my hair the night before or just get up a little bit earlier in the morning to sort out my hair. But my mum never, she never let any of us perm any of our hair. So I've never really had the experience of knowing what that feels like but I really could see torturing moments and experiences that many of my friends or um, aunties had gone through. Even my mum had permed her hair, so she was very much part of the, the perming world. I'm just grateful that there is like another option and opportunity for um, people out there who are ready and willing to basically take that step. Just starting out swimming and she was like, it's probably the easiest way for me to look after it. She'd relax it, then braid it, so it lasts for like six weeks. It's hard to ignore the pressures of like wanting to look good like day to day. Relaxers are made up of chemicals like sodium hydroxide that destroy kinks in the hair and leave a straightened look. In the 1980s and 90s, relaxers became the norm and images of black women on television and magazines usually featured straight, relaxed hair. But things are changing and many women are now embracing their natural locks thanks to a new wave of the natural hair movement. This is Clarissa McDonald, founder of Curly by Nature. She runs workshops encouraging women to embrace their natural hair. Just by the definition of relaxing the hair, you're destroying the hair, so you're damaging the hair. So relaxed hair essentially is in a damaged state because the bonds of the hair is broken down. I hate my natural hair. Like, I don't like people seeing me with my natural hair. Like even my friends, I'll hide from them from like seeing me with my hair out. I always like to have like weaving or like extensions. My last partner, he'll be like, oh, just take off your wig. Like it's, it's comfortable sleeping without a wig, but because I didn't like myself, I wouldn't let him see me without a wig. So sometimes he'll be asleep or something and I'll run to the bathroom, put my headscarf on, run back in bed. If I know he's about to wake up, I'll go back and put my wig on. <laughs> the whole natural hair journey is like long. <laughs> 
The natural hair movement actually emerged in the 1960s when sporting an afro became a symbol of black power, self-love and solidarity within the black community. This was a time when black people were... So it's just very interesting in terms of like the 1960s and, and when that movement in terms of supporting or proactively encouraging people to embrace their blackness is when this idea had been birthed across across a certain community. Still fighting for basic human rights like equal employment, voter rights and integrated public facilities. We all have choices and you know you can wear your hair natural. You can have your hair in protective styles and decide to wear weaves and wigs. You can relax your hair if you so choose. Having natural hair isn't easier, but for me, it's better. You know, I've probably been guilty of times of saying, oh, I, I, I don't like weave. Why are these women wearing weave? And, oh, they need to take the weave out. I genuinely find it very interesting because it's it's quite a familiar and common term within the black male community that black men do not like women with with weaves or wigs or their hair in not a natural state. Um, but you would genuinely you would you would find majority of black men who do kind of put out that that notion that yeah you know I'm not about women or my woman uh, wearing wigs or weaves but you generally would find them only dating girls that have like long weaves down to their you know their tailbone long hair don't care sort of flex or whatever so I really really did feel as I was growing up I really really struggled with like hearing those words that for me was a question of self-love it was a question for me of like really understanding like what you're saying versus like what you're actually doing. Also understanding why, from a black man's understanding or perspective, I don't think there was actually a genuine understanding as to why uh, we wear weaves or why were we wearing wigs and stuff like that. And I don't think there was like a lack of a lack of care as well. You can be walking down the street and you get comments like guys literally shouting at you like you are you are a nobody. You are a nobody. But you know it builds character. <laughs> not that I'm saying it's, it's acceptable in any way I loved I absolutely loved adored like my natural hair I even used to go secondary school times I'm talking hardcore secondary school times I used to go to secondary school and my hair would be you know like with the cotton and then you have the plait and then the like the little cotton threading like at the ends I used I used to like year nine year ten that was me but hmm the way the reception that I got was a bit was a bit off but, and sometimes that really does like kind of play a bearing into are you actually doing the right thing or maybe there's something you're missing. But I, I always, always liked my natural hair. But just in terms of like even within my community, in terms of school as well, like just being accepted for like having your hair and, and maybe like African threading and stuff like that was not, mm -mm, was not a vibe at all. You were not, you were not getting man like... <laughs> Those sort of things that like, you know, our parents didn't send us to school for that. And even the teachers did not understand. They just did not have any idea about blackness whatsoever. Embracing your hair or having your hair a certain way. That's the difference between you like in their eyes being good versus you being bad. Yeah, just so much of a misunderstanding. I'm not obviously, I do not want to basically leave that comment and just say black men don't don't understand or they're not relating to us but I, I I feel like they are doing a lot more better now in terms of understanding how we maybe have had to struggle with our hair in the past and uh, maybe why we are conscious of doing things a certain way before. From my side I was even contemplating as a protective hairstyle for the autumn and winter. I still haven't decided yet guys and maybe maybe you you might have some views on this. I might just put on a wig to manage my hair throughout the autumn and winter. But I was telling my partner, I got the like, the shittest like, shit on the ground type of look. Like, what, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what do you, what do you think you're doing, Emma? So I was like, mm, maybe, just maybe to kind of embrace and combat the winter season with my natural hair out. But I am going to be doing protective style, like no one's business, making sure the moisturizer is thick, sealed, because winter is such a harsh, it's like the most difficult season to get through with like Afro hair. But it was just nice. It was nice to like have your partner recognise that it's not something that they want to be seeing. 
and they're like happy to like go on the journey of exploration with you in terms of how you manage and look after your hair during the winter seasons. But what is being done to celebrate Afro hair in the media? To find out, I caught up with Lekia Lay, the founder of Project Embrace. Project Embrace is a platform that was established to um, challenge the narrow perception of what it means to be beautiful, especially to have beautiful hair. And generally in the media, especially in advertising, um, black women are almost non-existent. And that's when I decided I would do a billboard campaign. Clear Channel got back to me and said, it's a worthy campaign, we're going to support you. When they said they're giving me um, billboards in seven cities, I was beside myself. I, I wanted just one billboard in London and they're giving me seven billboards. Wow. By um, looking back at the- I love this hairstyle. I absolutely love this. China bumps with cornrows. I love it, I love it. The struggles and pressures black people have faced throughout history, it's clear to see why self-hair love can be a journey. Hair, I've come to discover, is as much about self-expression as it is about self-identity and cultural representation. No matter what we decide to do with our hair, the most important thing is to embrace it. Because ultimately accepting your hair is sort of accepting yourself. We basically want every young black girl to feel confident. We identified that growing up we had, we struggled with identity. No matter how much we try to enhance, what God's given us naturally is always going to be better. We can't expect great things from our young people and teenagers if we are telling them they're not good enough. We're all perfectly imperfect. Whatever it is, whether it's your weight, your complexion, your hair, you just got to embrace it and understand this is you. You can't expect someone to love you if you don't love yourself, and you have to know yourself to love yourself. I agree. Lastly, add to that, um... I really feel like Off Limits documentary um, produced by Sir uh, Rashidi Zakwani. Sir, you can get onto me later about how I pronounce your surname. I really feel like it is encouraging black people to take an opportunity to get to know yourself a bit better. Uh, take an opportunity to understand a bit more about yourself. Take an opportunity to educate your friends, your family, and even non-blacks as well, like they could do with some education and understanding about black hair and blackness and what that means. It's more about having an appreciation and an understanding for who we are as, as black people and what that means. That's pretty much my review. That brings this video to a close. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it engaging. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, and make sure you follow me on Instagram as well at Good Hair Guides. And thank you so much for tuning into this video. Take care. Bye.